we divide that by one of these? Okay, now when we divide it out, we don't want to disappear it. We don't want it to go anywhere because if we just write, if we divide this by uh, A to get 9, and divide this by A to get 4, this is not the same as that. If I put a number in for Y here, I will not get the same thing as if I put in a number for Y here. It would be much smaller in this one than it would in this one, right, for the most part. So we just want to factor it out. We want to show that it's still there. We could distribute it back in, get 72 minus 32 again. We don't want to make it disappear. But now 9 is a square, 4 is a square, so this would factor as 3 minus 2y and 3 plus 2y. Square to the first, square to the first, square to the second. Minus in this one, plus in that one. Looks like negative three t squared equals negative one oh eight. When we're solving equations, quadratic equations like this, we have to always make sure of what as far as the equation? It equals zero. It equals zero. So how do we get this to equal zero? Add one oh eight. Could add one oh eight to both sides, you get zero that way. Could we add three t to both sides? Three yeah. t squared? We could do it that way. Either way. But usually the right side is zero, so I think that's the natural thing. One hundred eight. So I'll just write like this: one hundred eight minus three t squared equals zero. Just so I see it as minus. So. Okay. So one hundred eight minus three t squared. Well, they're not they're not squares. Three is not a square. One hundred eight is not a square. But we remember the first rule of factoring, which is the first rule of factoring is not square. <laughs> first rule of factoring, first rule of class is sitting in your own seat. I've done it. You know who I'm talking to, I'm going to call you out by name. <laughs> you have to look at these two and ask yourself what? Three. Are they divisible? Are they divisible by the same thing. Are they divisible by the same thing? No, I'm just saying. <laughs> You're all divisible by three. I hope so, because this is the only thing three is divisible by is three. Okay, so we divide by three. We divide by three. What's 108 divided by three? Um, I can't see mine. 3.33333. Three, 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 three. No, 108 divided by three. Okay, wait, I got this. Maybe. I mean, 36. Six, 36. 36 minus 3 divided by 3 is 1, so it's 1t squared. Okay, now you might say, well, that looks like you did the opposite of what we said for this one. Right? I said, leave the 8 there. Don't make the 8 disappear. And you might think I made the 3 disappear. The difference is this is an equation, and I divided by 3 on both sides. 0 divided by 3 is 0. Right? And I just divided both sides by 3, which is totally fine. Uh, we have a difference of squares here. 36 is 6 squared. t squared is t squared. We've got 6 minus t. Mm -hmm. 6 plus t yep. equals 0. Yeah, so we got two factors multiplied together. we got 6 minus t is equal to 0. 
And okay. 6 plus t is equal to 0. Mm -hmm. And if I solve for t in both equations, Right, t equals 6 here, t equals negative 6 there. That's why the answers said things like t equals 6 with this symbol yeah. in front. It means two numbers, positive 6 and negative 6. It's not a magic new number that's positive and negative 6. It just means those two numbers are the answers. Any questions? Two squares. Okay. Then everything away, got a piece of paper for the reviews. Right. So here we have the square, that's three squared, there's a square, that's four squared. Factors and three x. Three x. Plus and minus four. You have to write it down, so if you were plus minus four, like that, it wouldn't really. No, I'm talking about that in parentheses. Uh, this one's going to factor first, 4x plus 5, 4x minus 5 equals 0. Get two things multiplied together, giving us 0. One of them has to be 0. So we say that, uh, we set up those two equations, either 4x plus 5 equals 0, or 4x minus 5 equals 0. Subtract 5 and divide by 4, we get negative 5 fourths. Add 5 and divide by 4, we get five positive fourths. 5 fourths. So when you have a difference of squares, you may have noticed in the answer key of this problem, we always get this plus and minus version of the same answer. Mm -hmm. Plus 5 fourths, negative 5 fourths. Any questions there? No. Okay. I just want to get the homework. to the me telling you everything you need to know for the homework. Um, okay, so like I said, this section is going to be like putting it all together in one place, right? which means that as part of factoring, you may uh, use a difference, in, difference of squares. You may have to factor something out that they all have in common first. Uh, you may factor by grouping, which if that doesn't ring a bell, I'm about to show you that. Uh, or it may just be a regular old quadratic that you maybe use the AC method on or something like that. Okay. And I'll try and give you a strategy for uh, which of these tools to use at what time. So to start with, seen, we've never tried anything like this, I don't think we've ever factored anything with an x cubed in it, it's always been x squared, okay, so this seems like something we've, we've never done before, but without realizing it, we we've tried. already done it many times. Yeah, I know I've done it. we got four terms here, and what we do right now at our, at our level of al algebra, if we see four terms, we're going to try factoring by grouping. Okay, that'll be familiar, I hope, as soon as I highlight this in yellow and this in purple. How does that look familiar? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, we, we haven't been given a problem where that's just all we did. This has been part of that AC method, as I call it. But it's exactly the same idea. We look at the yellow group, and we say, look at that. They have both of those have <laughs> x squared. So we're left with x plus 3. They both have 5s. They both have 5. So we take out a 5, which leaves us with, we should hope, x plus 3, because that's kind of the whole uh, the crux of factoring by grouping, is that 
each group winds up with an identical factor. And the next thing, which means we're almost done. We factor out that x plus 3 from here and from here. We undistribute it. It's the reverse of double distribution. OPS squared out. plus 5. X plus 3 times x squared plus 5. Yeah. OK, homework. <laughs> so that's factoring by grouping. The thing that we want to look out for is like, uh, that doesn't mean that we're done. Okay. Just because we did one kind of factoring, factoring by grouping, doesn't mean that we're done. That we might have something else to, like, yeah, some more factoring that can be done. I thought I had an example. You have to do the thing where it has to equal zero. That's for solving an equation. Oh, all right. The thing where it turns into three parentheses. Yeah. Yeah, so we would have a thing sometimes where it ends up three parentheses. Hey. <laughs> That's fun. It's supposed to come on after school. Whatever. Uh, um, I'm just going to have you try that very approach. So try x cubed minus 6 plus 2x minus 3x squared. The only thing that you should probably do before you start, what do you think? Put that third x on the end. Put the third x on the end? Mm -hmm. Well, we should write these in order, right? So we said x to the third, then we should write this guy as negative 3x squared. Next, then we should do plus 2x and minus 6. I'm going to write them in descending powers. And then work it as a factory by grouping. Okay, so I've rewritten them in order of exponents, biggest exponents, working my way down through the highest exponents. Mm -hmm. And this group has what in common? X squared. X yeah. squared lives with this x minus 3. And these two? Um, they have two. two. Oh, two. Yeah. Just a two, okay. right? Two times x minus three. We factor out that two. Mm -hmm. And we're left with x minus three factors in both, which factors as x minus three times x squared plus two. Mm add another little wrinkle. 3x cubed plus 15x squared minus 27x minus 135. Those numbers are kind of big. What should you always do? Like the first thing you should always do whenever you're factoring your quadratic, as we've said twice today, many times before that, yeah. Any other by can I factor out something from all of them? Right? Three. Is all divisible by something. Probably three, if anything. So yeah, try that, and then continue like we did just before this, factoring by grouping. But you have to remember the three. Yeah, keep the three there. I'm just move it to the outside of the parentheses. Okay, so the first thing that I think would make this a little easier is this is divisible by 3, and so is this, and so is this, and so is this. They're all divisible by 3. So I take the 3 out. So we can move it with x cubed plus 5x squared minus 9x minus 45. So now we've got something we can try factoring by grouping up. This guy, this group here, this group here. Three times. We've got this yellow group. We're going to factor out what do these both have in common? Three. Wait, they're 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 X squared. X squared. Wait, yeah. Giving us X plus five. What do these two have in common? No, no, no. 
yeah. negative nine. Because the first term is negative, yep. I would say back out of negative nine. nine. Negative nine times x plus five. five. Negative nine times five is negative 45. <coughs> we have here, you got the x plus five. Plus five times x squared minus nine. Yeah. Okay. Now I don't really need these extra parentheses. No, just carry down that x five and you'll be good. And then you guys factor out the x squared and minus nine. So it, it looks like good. We we factor out the three. We factor by grouping. Great. But still it equals zero. No, I never put equals zero. No, you didn't. Okay, I'm gonna jump. Uh, this looks good. So three x plus five can't be factored anymore. But x squared minus nine, we can factor that. Mm -hmm. Because it's a three thing. Right. This is a difference of squares. You got an x squared and a three squared. It's a very special pattern difference of squares that we just learned about in the previous section, nine point seven. Yeah. How does x squared minus nine factor? x minus 3, x plus 3. Minus 3, x plus 3. Oh. If oh I gave you that God. on the homework that you just turned in, that's exactly how you would factor that, just that part by itself. x squared minus 9 factors as x minus 3 times x plus 3. Right. Spooky. And when it's part of the rest mm -hmm. of the polynomial, still factors that way. And here's it's all three, all four factors, I guess, yep. with the, including the 3. Yes. So the very first thing I'd say, always, always, which we can see in this problem we just did, factor out, in this case, the 3, or whatever they all have in common, just factor it out. Makes all the numbers smaller, easier to work with. So you have to guess and guess and guess. Right, there's a lot less guessing and guessing. There's an I. 1, Roman numeral 1. Okay. Yes. Factor out any common any common factors. And part two comes in several different parts. I would say Look at the number of factors. So look at the number of factors. There are four factors, sorry, not factors, but terms. It's not factored until we factor it, number of terms. If there's four terms, try what we just like revisited today. Try factoring by grouping. In fact, I would almost guarantee you that the only way we're going to be able to, like right now, at this level of algebra, factor something that has four terms, the only way is going to be with grouping. Okay. Four There's five. We're not going to have five at this point. Why not? Because we don't know how to do it yet. Wouldn't it just be like almost exactly the same way? Nope. It's completely different. It's completely different. So there's four terms to try factoring by grouping. I mean, there, there, are, there are plenty of polynomials that... There are lots of uh, polynomials that are four terms that cannot be factored with grouping, but can be factored. We won't have those. They will be just factoring by grouping. There are polynomials with five terms that can be factored, but you can't use factoring by grouping on them. We're not going to look at those. We're going to look at a small set. With three, it's just the regular old quadratic. Regular quadratic that we would factor just like the easy way or the AC method or uh, well, one of those two. And if there's two terms, then that's hopefully a difference of squares. Hopefully it's a difference of squares. If it's not, then just don't worry about it. And then, part three is 
just, you know, just make sure that there's nothing left to do. Just, just double check. Just not even close to the word double. Double check for further factory. So what we just did is a good example of one where you would need to factor something out that's in common, factor by grouping, and then double check for more factoring because after we factored out the three and then factored by grouping, we wound up with a difference of squares that we can factor further. That's usually the, the catch. Like this, if you're going to factor some more, it's usually because one of them has a difference in squares. Yeah. One last one before the homework. You do uh, next to the fourth minus eighty one. of squares, it would factor as x squared plus 9 and x squared minus 9. Oh, <laughs> we know that's right because, but how do we know that's right? How can I double check? You distribute, you see you got x squared, you distribute the other x squared, x to the fourth, and you got an x, x squared to the negative 9, which will make it, um, Negative x, no, 9, 9x squared, and then you go 9, positive 9, so you make uh, right. x squared will be 9x squared, right. and then you got 9, the negative 9, which is 80, negative 81. Right, and the 9x and the negative 9x, well, the negative 9x squared, the positive 9x squared are going to cancel each other out. Uh -huh. uh, now, that's supposed to be an underline, not like, I don't know. X squared minus nine. Can we factor X squared minus nine? Yes. It's two terms. X. Oh, minus just three X squared. Minus minus squares. X minus three. X plus three. Yeah, I guess. Okay, which leaves us with X squared plus nine mm -hmm. times X minus three times X minus three. You might say, well, what? Can we factor that one? It's really close to that one. X no. squared plus nine. No. X squared minus nine. Because you can't do it in positives. Yeah, there is no uh, sum of squares pattern. That's one thing to remember. Uh, if we tried to kind of force it, we might think, okay, well, that was negative. This is positive. Maybe it's x plus 3 times x plus 3. Okay, well, if that were true, I should be able to multiply it together and get the x squared plus 9. But I'll get x squared plus 3x plus another 3x plus 9. That's x squared plus 6x plus 9. Well, that didn't work. Strike that. It's a negative and a positive, they cancel each other out. If we did a negative and a positive, we get x squared minus 9, right? Because negative 3 times positive 3 is negative 9. And the only other possibility would be x minus 3 times another x minus 3. And that would give us x squared and a positive 9, but then we just get minus 6x as a middle term. So that wouldn't work either. So there's no way to factor that x squared plus 9. It's the positive and the negative canceling each other out that allow us to have no middle term. And then to have, it causes the negative there on the end, the negative nine. So that's done, but this was able to be factored a little bit further. So we have x squared plus nine times x minus three times x plus three, and it's done. It's factored out.